Very good day to each and every one of you. We thank God that you are here with us. We welcome you in the name of Jesus to the upper room, the place where the word of God and the God of the word meets us continuously. From every uh, nation, from every continent, we are so grateful to God that you have joined us and we know that week by week, week by week, God is speaking to us and we are growing. There's one verse that comes to my mind today in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. The Bible says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The word that we are receiving carries a nature. The word spirit there is not the capital S, so it's not the Holy Spirit, but he's talking about a little, the, the small letter, the caps, uh, S, that means talks about a nature. The word carry a nature. Every time we speak a word, it carries our nature. And when God speaks his word, it carries his nature. And what we are receiving is not a message. We are receiving a nature that is coming from God through Papa Jonathan to us. Whoever you listen to, whenever you listen to, words are, are life. The word life there is the word Zoe, is a God kind of life. Simply meaning that as we receive, as we continue to receive this word, and we begin to chew it. We begin to um, interact with it. We begin to believe it. We begin to see it. We begin to allow it to shift our perspectives, our faith, our belief, and allow the divine enablement in the word to change us. What happens to us is that more and more, the words that we speak now will be spirit and life. What will happen to us is that we are not just staying the same. We are not just thinking the same. But now there is a change in our heart and in our mind because the words that we are hearing now is carrying life. The word life there is the word, the, the Greek word zozo, which means the God kind of life. Yes, the God kind of life, simply meaning that every time you respond, every time you talk, every time you think, there is a God life behind. There's a God factor behind everything we say and everything we do. And this is why we believe that whatever we are hearing in the upper room is not a message. I say again, it is not a message, but it is the nature of God. It is the life of God. It is the intention of God. It is the mind of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit coming to us through a message. Coming to us through a message. Many times we are like, we're so excited with the box when we receive a gift. And we don't look for what is in the box. And this is what we do many times. Wow, it's a message. It's a great message. No, it's not. The message is the vehicle. What's in the message must begin to shape our life and begin, and begin to make our life. Father, we pray this evening that we will be hungry. There will be a hunger. There will be a thirst. Remove the spirit of familiarity from our lives. Remove everything that is not of you. Remove every motive. Let our hearts be pure. Let the purity of the word come and wash us. We are clean because of your word. The word of God says, Lord, I pray today that with deep hunger and thirst, that we will have encounters even as we hear the word shift, significant shifts in our heart and our mind so that we will be more and more like you. Thank you, Lord. I pray for each one. I pray for a hearing ear and a seeing eye and and I pray, Lord, whatever the Holy Spirit is saying, let the church listen. Let the church hear. He that has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Amen. I pass the time over to Papa for us to receive Spirit and life. The book of Genesis and chapter 39. We are dealing with a topic called the making of a prince. We're not looking for Joseph the street kid. We're looking for Joseph the prince. Amen. 
God is preparing us for the throne. He's preparing us to rule and reign together with him. And we must have such a caliber that we are fit for the palace. Amen. Every aspect of our life, whether it's health, whether it's our physical appearance, whether it's the way we spend our money, whether it's the way we carry our lives one with the other, our behavior, our conversation, every aspect, including our attitudes, it must be fit for the king's palace. The Babylonians took the, the sons of the Hebrews and took them into captivity. And they prepared them to learn their culture, to learn their language, to learn the customs of the kings so that they can serve at the king's palace. And that's what we are doing today. We are taking young generation of men and women who are not going to live like the world. Mm -hmm. I said those who will not live like the world, those who will not allow themselves to become contaminated by worldly ways so that these sons of the king can remain in the palace. You know, there is a place that God is going to give to a new generation that he is raising up in this hour. A, a place that no man can take away. That is your place. Your place is to stay with the king. If you read the book of Revelation chapter 12, a, a, a son was born to this woman. And the son was caught up to the throne. To God's throne and to his throne. The child was not born to the earth. It was caught up to the throne. Are we hearing? That is a generation that is not contaminated by the ways of this world. You know, it is, it is almost impossible to find young people today not contaminated. If they're not contaminated in this, they're contaminated in that. If they're not contaminated in, in this area of loving material things, then they are falling in love with people. With boys of every sort. Are we hearing? If you go into their rooms, all you see is pictures of all the film stars except their own pictures it's called an identity crisis are you with me if you have a problem like that go back home clean up your room cast down those idols you didn't say amen to that because i will be checking your rooms if i get near you so many of us we just put all kinds of idols out there these are all our models you know what is there to follow in michael jackson prince he's not a prince yeah backstreet boys we're not created for the backstreet man yeah boy zones when will they ever grow up bgs you know this is there's this thing with every BGs, there's another sting there. Hey, I know that world. For most of us, we think this is, this is the way to go because we like them, we, we hear them, we, we thought, wow, they're gathering a crowd, they're famous, so they must be doing something right because they're famous. Do you know people are famous for so many ways, so many reasons? Marriages in Hollywood don't last very long. Success in the world don't last very long. Their charts is for a while and then they have to strive and, you know, cough out blood in order to get back to the same position again. The world is not kind. I said the world is not kind. So they break up their groups and they begin to form other groups and try to go solo, try to do single albums and, you know, and they, they will have to dress a certain way in order to fit in. If you're all fully clothed and you're on the album fully clothed looking like a snowman, nobody will buy except during Christmas. So you have to reveal parts of your body. The more parts of your body you're prepared to reveal, the more albums will be sold, at least for the photograph that you put provided. That's a kind of world. If you want to go for fame, and this is the way you choose, then you have sold your soul to the devil. My friends, there is a way to rise to the top, a clean way. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing me? Put some energy into your body, you know, don't just like, yeah, it's like, you know, looking like as though you have dead chicken. I can put some life in your body. Can you do that? Yeah. I said, can you do that, young man over there? Can you do that? Yeah. All right. Please do remember, God wants to do this amazing work and prepare you for the throne. But we read 
as we rise up to the throne, we must develop healthy relationships within the house. First in your natural family as well as in the church. You, you cannot rise apart from your brothers. How God anointed Jesus above all his brothers. In the midst of all of them, he handled himself wisely. That The Bible talks about David, how David went out to war. He acted more wisely than the servants of Saul. He acted more wisely. If I put you in a group of non-Christians, you must act so wisely. There's a distinction between you and them. The way you behave. You just behave like a non-Christian, then God cannot select you for the throne because there's no difference between selecting you and selecting them. If your behavior in the house and among one another is just like a heathen, then why should God prepare you for the throne? Why should God give you the best? Why should he take you to a place where he's going to give you a place of favor of his presence? Relationship within the house. Amen? You believe that? The second thing that God gave, that spoke to us very, very clearly is what? What is the second thing that I mentioned to you? The perception of God's of God-given dreams in our own hearts. We must be able to perceive what he plays within us. As long as we are confused with what God has put in our hearts, we are always searching. We are always looking outside. We are not looking in. We are all the while thinking that everybody has, but we don't have. We are all the while thinking that other people are making it, and we are not making it. We always feel that everybody has the goodies. We have the bad things. We are given the bad part of the stick. You know, we sit inside the church and we look at our friends. They are going on a picnic. We are coming to Sunday morning service. You may be thinking they must be having a better life than us. But that's not true. I said that is not true. You find that those who prepare to lay the foundation now is going to be able to have a great future tomorrow. If you lay down your life now, that's a better time. Remember the story of the grasshopper and the ends. The grasshopper was partying. Do you know the story? How many of you know the story? Give me a wave if you know the story. The young man there, what's his name? You're the one who came and talked to me, isn't it? You. What's your name? What? Shem. All right. Make sure you're listening, all right? Make sure you're listening, all right? Now, it's, it's important for us, you know, the story of the, the grasshopper and the ant. You all know the story? Those of you who know the story, put your hands up. Now, it's important for us to understand the grasshopper was partying in every season. During summer, he was enjoying himself, but the ants were still working and working and working and working. In the time of the winter, the grasshopper had no more food, and he came to the ants. By the time he reached the place, the ant was dead. Sorry, the grasshopper was dead. Why? Because he was not going to think about his future. And this is a story that sticked with me as I was growing up and learning as a young kid about the story of the ant and the grasshopper. See, my friends, you can party now, but your future is what you, it's, uh, you're risking. You can party now. You can flirt around with men, flirt around with women, flirt around with girls, flirt around with sin, with dreams, and with all kinds of things. What you're doing is you're killing yourself. Because once you touch evil, evil stays. It takes a long time to take evil out of your body. Do you know never to smoke at all is better than to smoke and then quit. And then you find the problem is all the while there eating up. Why? Because you started something and there is no way to take it out of your system until God solemnly comes to you because of repentance. You try sex. It's going to not only finish with you. You say, well, I'll try it once. But you see, when you get into marriage, you're going to have problems. All the people you slept with is going to appear before your face. While you're loving your wife, loving your husband, looking at your children, all these things are going to be playing back in such a life. It's going to be torment, my friends, unless you clean yourself up today and ask the Lord to cleanse you deeply internally inside you because these things will carry its continuance. Are you hearing me? Don't experiment sex. Don't experiment drugs. Don't experiment alcohol. Don't experiment the things that the world is offering to you because once you enter in there, it will eat into your system. Are you hearing me? 
it will eat into your system sometimes you know you go and read some articles in the teen magazines and you know and you hear that you read the stories of questions and answers you know the section talk to me do you know the section when you read now how people are asking questions well I have this problem and have you see all these things will play back in your mind all the memories of people's incidents and people's sin you see they these people write to this magazine and they choose the most juiciest story to sell their magazine and you're foolish enough to go and read it and by the time you read, whether it's ladies magazine or not, you like to read other people's problems. Why? Because you're a busybody. You're just a busybody. You just allow the devil put a hook on your jaw. Because you want to find out what is the problem, what is the answer. So that's not what you're finding out. You have a temptation inside you to read the juicy parts of people's misfortunes. Every person have that tendency that's why you got to have serious discipline to pull yourself back are you hearing me see magazines don't write unless they can find something juicy something that will attract people something that will begin to make people want to read it more and more that's why they put a lot of magazines they put a lot of the stories uh, you know about sexual encounters and in the newspaper they put rape cases and all kinds of cases that will attract the attention of people in the magazine, they put somebody who is famous to draw attention so that people can buy the magazine. The lesser they are clothed, like in a Mercedes Benz, they're selling Mercedes Benz. There is a lady that is not properly clothed sitting on the Mercedes Benz. What are you buying? Are you buying the woman or are you buying the car? But why is the woman and the car? There's no correlation between the woman. She's not a driver. She's sitting on the bonnet. If you drive the car away, she will die. Why do people do things like that? It's called to the, the appeal to the flesh. And you fall for it. And you buy the magazine and you thought, well, you know, you know, oh, now I know all the answers to all the questions. Just that the devil has a hook on your jaw. That's all. And he used the magazine. What you want to know can be found out by people who know. You don't have to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in order to be wise. All these things are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat them, you not only know the good, but also you know the bad. And you begin to taste the bad and taste the good. You have learned to take a mixture rather than eat from the tree of life. That's why this morning I want to feed you from the tree of life that you may have life. Amen. The Bible has answers. God has answers for these things. How to cut the flesh off, cut off the powers of the enemy. So God desires, as in the grooming of moving us from, from, from just being an ordinary person to become a prince in the house of God, we have talked about the principles of what it means to have healthy relationships in the house. We talked about perceptions of God-given dreams on the inside of our hearts. We talked about the evidence of God's presence manifesting with favor upon our lives. Amen. And this morning we will deal with a very important issue called the power of integrity and purity. When you are pure, you are powerful. Purity is power. When you are pure, it's, it's powerful. When you're clean, it's powerful. Don't think when you're dirty, you're smart. If you're corrupt, you know, you're, you, you know you, you, you're corrupt on the inside, but you just act like nobody knows about it. You know, your mind is corrupt, your emotions are corrupt, and you have tested and tried every kind of stuff, but you look like a nice holy Joe. That doesn't make you, that doesn't make you powerful. You are weak. You are weak, my friends. When you have tasted the poison of the enemy, the weakness dwells inside you. It's only a matter of time when the enemy will attack you again. That's why power... There is purity that, you know, power is in the purity. So let me deal with you Joseph. as we take you back and try to draw some principles. And in the next following sessions, I'll give you some very, very practical guidelines how you can observe a pathway of righteousness.
Talk to me. John Kai, are you listening? Yeah. yeah. Don't dream, okay? Some of you I don't know what you've been doing. Did you wake up on time? I said, did you wake up on time? Yeah. Even your voice is terrible. I said, did you wake up on time? Yeah. Learn how to keep your spirit strong. This is not the way to behave. All right? Sit up straight. Come on. Sit up straight. Put your back up. And learn how to respond. Those of you who are having all kinds of problems, you must learn how to write so that you can re remember them more often. It simply means every one of you, before you leave, you have to order the tapes. You're not leaving this conference without ordering the tapes. A personal set for all of yourselves. Are you hearing? Because you cannot remember everything I tell you. And what God has been speaking to us is so important. If you come in a group, if you can buy a set, it'd be great. Then go back home, reproduce it for yourselves. It's okay. I'm not trying to make money out of you. But you've got to have a personal set. Every one of you. If you have to fast for the next two days, go ahead and fast. All right? After the conference, I mean, you will have food here. But you need to have them. I said you need to have them. It's not an option. All right? It's not an option. Because these are things that you will need to hear again and again and again until you build this thing into your own heart. Don't sit here acting lazy and just thought you it's another conference. This is not a conference. This is a training time to prepare you to become a prince. We don't train vagabonds and lazy bones. We train the best. Bring them into a place where they can become God's choice instruments in the last days. The power of integrity and purity. Let's go to the book of Genesis 39. I've been trying to start this chapter for so long because some of you are distracting me by not responding well. Let's look in verse, uh, th chapter 39, verse 7, verse 6 verse. So he left everything that he owned in Joseph's charge. This is Potiphar. And with him, there did not, he, he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph. And she said, lie with me or sleep with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. He has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil, ever say great evil, and sin against God? And she spoke to Joseph day after day, and he did not listen to her to lie beside her, or be with her now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the household was there inside she caught him by his garment say saying saying to him lie with me he left his garment in his, in her hands and fled and went outside and when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside she called to the men of the household and said to them see he has brought in a Hebrew to us to make sport of us. And he came in to me to lie with me. And I screamed. When he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled and went outside. So she left his garment beside her until her master came. And she spoke to him with these words. The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came in to me and makes, to, to make sport of me. And as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside the power of integrity and purity integrity means this unchangeableness in changeable times integrity means unchangeableness in changeable times that means to say your character your value systems do not change unchangeableness in changeable times unchangeableness in changeable times your your core values what you believe your convictions of your heart your value systems do not change at any moment 
The things that you long for will never be compromised. The thing that you uphold will never be compromised. Your standards will not even be compromised by yourself. Even when you get angry, you know how to restrain your anger, not to lose your core values. You're prepared to restrain even yourself. Are you hearing me? You're prepared even to deal with yourself in a very hard way. In order to prevent yourself from crossing what you believe to be the righteous thing to do. Amen. That's integrity. When nobody is looking, you still can hold yourself accountable. Most people can't do that. The moment everybody disappears, they just change like a chameleon. Nobody is around. They flip through the phonographic magazine. Nobody's around. They click onto the websites that are filled with this filth. When nobody is looking around, their mind is thinking all kinds of evil. There is no integrity. There is a hollow life that is not holy. When you are alone is when you really know who you are. It's not when you're with people inside a conference like this, when you lift your hand and worshiping God and with tears in your eyes. It may be just crocodile tears. But what you are really on your own is what you really are. You cannot lie to yourself, my friends, just sitting here and thinking that because you're sitting in the presence of God, everything is okay. No, my friends, you've got to deal with everything that is not right inside, flush it out. I said, you've got to learn to flush these things out. That's why this woman came to Joseph and said, come lie with me. But the integrity of his heart, even though nobody was seeing, nobody was hearing the conversation, yet in his own heart, his heart restrained him. That's integrity. All right? Unchangeableness in changeable circumstances. You are prepared to hold yourself. You are prepared to discipline your eyes. You are prepared to discipline your hands. You are prepared to discipline your thinking patterns. Are you hearing? You will not allow your thought patterns to keep running and running and running. You just sit down there and you daydream and dream all kinds of wicked things inside. You just let your mind go. No, no. Integrity means you hold fast to it and pull it back and say no to it. If you don't have that, you have no power. Somebody is having power over your life. You're powerless. If you cannot control your own thoughts, you cannot pull your own emotions back, you are powerless. You're not powerful. You may be thinking, well, nobody caught me. It's only a matter of time. The first one to catch you is the devil. Why doesn't God catch you first? Because he wants you to learn your lesson. The devil will catch you first. He will use the circumstances. He will manipulate you. He will blackmail you. He will do everything. He will mess up the rest of your emotions. Because you only have one heart. How many hearts do we have? Talk to me. How many hearts do we have? Why is that some of you are not opening your mouth? I say, how many hearts do we have? We have one heart. Out of this heart comes love. Out of this heart comes hatred. We, love, we, we hate our enemies with this heart. We love our children with the same heart. Stop lying. There are no two hearts, only one. But the next time you go for a checkup, ask the doctor. There's only one heart. There's nobody with two hearts. Every one of us have only one heart. You start to hate people and start... The same heart that hates is the same heart they're trying to love. You cannot be lying to yourself. There's poison somewhere of all your hatred in the same heart. And so when you're loving, you cannot divide because your heart goes out the same way. It's the same heart. You touch poison with these hands. And you serve somebody that you love with the same hands that you touch poison. Don't you think they're going to be affected? Come on, tell me the truth. Don't you think they're going to be affected? Stop lying to yourself. That you are in full control of this thing. You're not in full control, my friend. The devil is. The same hand that touched poison is the same hands that is now feeding the one you love. They will die before your eyes. Why? The contamination is in your life. They will be affected. See, you don't know these things until you begin to have somebody you can really love. 
your husband, your wife. This is when the contamination will happen faster. That's why a lot of people mess up their marriages because they mess up their teenage years. They mess up their children. Why? Because all the contamination touch, touch the ones who are closest to you. I mean, you never touch your enemies that dearly. You touch, if you touch sin, you touch, you know, you touch all that which is evil with these hands. In the same expression, when you're touching the ones you love, you know, pouring out the same kind of love and affection, you are going to contaminate them. The power of integrity. Amen. The unchangeableness of your conviction. If you believe something, don't change, no matter what happens. If they kill you, at the most they can do is kill you. It's better to go to heaven clean. All right, it's better to go to heaven clean so that you receive the reward for all that you have done here on this earth rather than become contaminated and become part of hell. Are we hearing? Keep your heart with integrity because that is your power. Yeah, then you, 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 if you have no integrity, you have no authority to speak. Because every time you speak, your heart will condemn you. Your heart will say, huh? You're saying, you know, we got to be clean. Your heart will say, huh? You don't want your heart to speak to you like that. Yeah. Every time you pray, Lord, I surrender my life. Your heart will say, huh? What a lie. So God is, God's never going to answer the prayer. Why? You never feel confident. You never feel you can rise because every time inside your heart, there is always this aching thing that, that keeps on reminding you, you haven't changed, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, and you're not truthful. That's why people don't have power because they don't have integrity. They keep compromising in their lives. They have no authority to say and do. The devils don't listen to them. When they pray, there is no power. Are you hearing? It's no use. Hey, well, I want to give my life to God. I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I serve you, Lord. It's not just a lie. I've seen so many people make promises. But the power to stay is in the power of integrity. Amen? When you, when you have such an unchangeableness in such a heart, no matter what will happen, no matter what the devil will offer to you, no matter what the world will offer to you, you will not give in. The woman spoke to this Joseph a day after day, day after day. She spoke to him every day. She said to him, come lie with me. It's okay to sin. I'm the one. Don't worry about my master. He's not, he's not coming back. He's going to be away for two weeks. I'm alone by myself. I'll open the window. Keep the window open for you. She made all the plans. She said, nobody will know because I'm the mistress of the house. I will guard you. I'll protect you. I'll make sure all the men are away so that you can come and see me. But Joseph never fell for such a trickery. Why? Because he said, how can I do this great evil and sin against God? Not just your husband, but against God. That's integrity. Unchangeableness. Hey, it's one thing to promise. It's one thing to say, keep on saying all the nice things. We're good at telling promises, especially when we're young. Mommy, we will, I promise, mommy, when I come back, you let me go, and then I'll come back and I'll clean up the place. Then you go back to square one. Your mother knows you well. Yeah. So many times we, we keep promising. No, we'll come back early. You know, we, we'll come back at 10. Mommy, I'll come back at 10, but you won't come back at 10. You're not thinking. You think... You win. You think you cheated your mother. You only cheated yourself. Because you're breaking down the fiber of integrity in your own heart. By lying to others, you have not cheated them. You have only cheated yourself. You have broken down the fiber of integrity in your own life. Are you hearing me? That's why we must learn to have this power. Our integrity gives us authority. For us to be able to have great confidence. Because your conscience will not bother you. Can you say amen to that? I say, can you say amen to that? Let me take you to 1 John chapter 3. 
As I mentioned to you that we're going to spend a lot of time, at least three sessions on this power of integrity and deal with various aspects of it so that this area you come out clean. Amen? One John chapter three. I do not assume that every one of us are okay in this area. I assume that every one of us will have some difficulty in this area every now and then. For some of us, we'll have more difficulties in this area than we others can possibly imagine. Depend on how your circumstances are and what kind of environment and terrain you are living in. If you live, if you live among a people where all the value systems are compromised. Your temptations are worse. If you live in a college where everybody is sleeping around, today they are flirting with this person, sleeping next day, next day they are partying, boozing, you know, they are drinking and they are sleeping overnight with all their friends' homes, you can be very sure that sin is prevalent in that environment. Because of that reason, you know, you, you get contaminated by the kind of circle of friends and your temptations increase. In the, in, in the, in the Western world, all right, even in Europe itself, you know, if you don't sleep around uh, by the age of whether you're 16 or 19, they think that, you know, something is wrong with you. I'm not saying that everybody does it, but that is a common culture. And when you have temptation like that, by the time you're by 12 o'clock in in, at night, you know, all the movies are not fully censored at all. Even the daytime, they're not censored, but they push all the movies that are not censored after 12. Are you hearing me? So if you live in an environment like that, so if you're not going to sleep and you're alone as in, in your university dorm and you turn on the television, the rape scenes are not censored, the sexual scenes are not censored, the, the sleeping scenes are not censored, and your eyes view them, those kind of temptations will increase your vulnerability to the attacks of the devil. So I'm only trying to be kind to you. If you had a problem until now, then let it no longer be a problem. Are we hearing? I said, are you hearing this? So that it no longer be a problem. At least we thank God for an Islamic, you know, Islamic country, you know, where, where Islam is the official religion, though we are a secular nation. But you find this, that there, a lot of things are censored. A lot of things are censored. You don't have bare-breasted women. We don't have naked men running around. Are you hearing me? Even Mr. Bean is censored. Are we hearing? There are some scenes of Mr. Bean where he's running around naked because of certain, certain parts. He's stuck in a hotel. Even those scenes are censored. We thank God that those evil are not thrown out into the open. Are we hearing? Mom and I went to New Zealand in 1986. And when we were in New Zealand in 1986, for the first time, we were, we were just, we have never seen this kind of stuff. A bare-breasted woman suddenly appeared on television. You know, Joanne was playing around, you know, and, and I was there. And here was Joanne, right? All of us, she was coloring something. And then there was this thing suddenly appeared. I'm thinking, wow, what's wrong with this world? Because we've been so sheltered in our nation for, for all our lives. And suddenly appearing then, I was shocked. Like it was a shock to us. We heard about it, but we never thought it could ever happen in our lives. When you're in an environment like that, you increase your temptation. So let me just help you to deal with these things in your own heart. Integrity gives you authority. All right? You are able to hold yourself together and you are not in shambles. 1 John chapter 3. Have you got a Bible there? 1 John chapter 3 and in verse 19. We will know by this that we are of the truth and we will assure our hearts before him. In whatever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, we have, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Are we hearing this? All right. What does the Bible say? Is that we know that we are of the truth and we will assure our hearts before him. 
Sometimes we don't know. People say we are proud. People say we are this. People say we, there, we are that. We don't know. How can we be assured in our own hearts when our conscience is clean? No matter what people say will not hurt us or condemn us. We will not even be offended. Are you hearing me? Even if they use bad words, even if they are vulgar, even if they attack us, our hearts do not condemn us. We have authority to stand to face it. People can say you're no good. In your heart, it doesn't register. Bible says we can assure our hearts that we are of the truth. People say you're proud. Some of us are shocked. And we repent for whatever we don't even feel. Are we hearing? Because the moment people say something to us, we feel, hey, they are right, we're wrong. We lose our position immediately. Why? Because we don't walk with integrity and walk close to our conscience. The moment they say you're proud, you, you, you know, you, 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 you know you're, you're lustful, you, you get shot at, at, at your own and, and, and you start to repent according to what they say, not according to what you feel. And all the time in your life, you're shifting your post. You're shifting your position. People are knocking you here, knocking you there, and you're all the while losing your position in God. Because people are attacking you with words. People, people are attacking you with lies. People are attacking you with words that are frustrating you, and you don't know how to stand. We will know we are of the truth. Are you hearing me? We will know we are of the truth and we can assure our hearts before him. And if our heart does not condemn us, then God has released us. So who is the one who guards us? Our own hearts. Amen? Our own hearts guard us. Our own conscience guard us. That's why we must learn to tune our conscience to convictions of the Holy Ghost. We must learn to build light into this conscience. We must live with absolutes. We must live with truth. God desires truth in the inward parts. You remember the scripture? God desires truth in the inward parts. Inside our hearts, we are yes and amen to God all the time. In our hearts, we, we will not yield to anything. Our heart knows how serious we are. How insistent we are. Not just how sincere. So many people are sincere, but they're not serious. Hey, you didn't understand English language. I said there's so many people who, are, who look sincere, but they're not serious about anything. If you catch them, they will cry. But inside their heart, they're not serious. They will not make any effort. At the, at the easiest point, they will break. If our heart condemns us, God is greater. You don't stand a chance. But if in our hearts we say, God, we, 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 we are true. We know we are true. Our heart does not condemn us. Our heart said, you're okay. Don't listen to the lies. You're okay. You're not proud. You're not what they say you are. They say you're proud, you're this and you're that, the other. And, and all these things can confuse us because we can lose our position. Are we hearing? Because we, we grow, we are different from them. They try to judge us and try to condemn us. They say, you are like this, you are like that. No, we're not. In our hearts, we know we're not. But, it, but still, these people insist that not only they gang, they gang up together. Two or three people and they attack you and then think, wow, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, they must be right. But this is a conspiracy. Are you listening to me? It's a conspiracy. They all talk together among themselves and, and different ones attack you at different days. And you'll be thinking, wow, this person said that, that person said that, three persons said I'm proud. I must be proud then. But you don't know these three people have been talking together. We can assure our hearts before him that we are true. We know we are true if we live by our conscience. But you see, if your conscience says you're wrong, you're wrong. Even if nobody tells you. Even if nobody comes and says you are, you are proud. If your conscience said, hey, that's wrong. You're crossing the line. You're wrong. 
Just surrender. Because you cannot beat your conscience. Because your conscience works hand in hand with God. Conscience is a function of your spirit. You can write this down. Conscience is the function of the spirit that approves or disapproves The conscience is the function of our spirit that approves or disapproves conscience, C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. Our conscience is a place, is a function of our spirit that approves or disapproves our motives, our actions, Is a place where which approves our motives, our actions, our attitudes. All right, deals with our attitudes, our actions, our motives, and even thinking patterns. And even thinking patterns. Let's say, for example, you're thinking something. Let's say you're thinking about a certain person in a, in a way the Holy Spirit don't approve. Straight away, your conscience will register. You start to ring. Conscience is like this. Let's say this, this particular place that I'm standing, four by four, is a place where it's called light. Everybody say light. Whatever God tells you is in this place. Are you with me? If you walk out from what God has said, you're walking out of light. When you walk out of light, where are you walking into? Into darkness. And if you're walking into darkness, the blood of Christ does not cover you anymore. If God told you something and you stay within, you're covered. You're covered by the light. And he who lives in the light will not stumble. Are you following me? That's why it's very safe for God to keep speaking to you. The more you know, the better it is. In fact, you're protected because you know. If you understand what the Holy Spirit said to you and you stay within, even if you don't move, just stay within. Doesn't matter how much attack comes to you, you're safe. Don't compromise. Just stay there. Don't move. Just stay in the light. You're safe. Because the blood of Jesus will cover you. You will never lose out by obeying God. Always remember this. All through your life from today until kingdom come. When you obey, you don't lose. When you obey, you do not lose. Sometimes you feel you lose. You lose out. You know, here am I. Obey God. I come to church. My friends are going for picnic. I think I must be losing out. No, you're not losing out. Oh, I tell you, believe me, you, you're not losing out. Your dividends are greater. Your blessings are greater. You know, your joy, your, your future is greater. Because people receive the joy of that which is passing away. You receive that which is eternal. You receive that. You know, when God spoke to me, he said, Son, I want you to quit your studies and begin to go and work so that you can support your family. Now, that was very difficult for me. Because I like to study. At the age of 17, leaving school and going out to work. And I couldn't find a job. If you don't have a full certificate, you know, you only have a high school certificate. You cannot get a job. The only job you can get is a laborer's job. But God said quit. My friends were going to university. They were going to colleges. And I'm thinking, here, here am I, God, I'm off to obey you. So I said, Lord, I trust you because you're my father. You know exactly what you want me to do and you have plans. And I know your plans are better plans than my plans. I think if I go out, I'll get all the good things. But you said, go this way. It will still be good because you follow me. I said, okay, I trust you. I only know this road is good. But I never know this road is going to be good except that you who are leading me is good. I don't know about this road. I'm not sure about this road, but I know the one who I follow. 
He is good. He died for me. He loved me. He cared for me. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. I don't know this way. I've never been this way before. But in the natural, I know if I follow this, go to university, get a degree, get a job, and you will have some amount of money that at least you can be sure of. If you're a teacher, you'll get a certain amount of pay. If you're a lawyer, you'll get a certain amount. If you're a doctor, you'll get a certain amount. So at least this part I know. But this part that you want me to follow, quit my studies now and go and work. And I, I worked in an FNN factory where they make Coke, they made a, a Fanta, they make all kinds of uh, Sprite, a Seven Up. And I worked in that factory and I had to stack bottles. That was not easy. When you're 17 years of age and you have high ambitions and high hopes of a great future, and here you are working a laborer's job, it's not easy. The smell of all the dirty bottles was getting into my head. I'm thinking, wow, this, where am I going? All I know, I was following him, and it's going to be a good place. It's not easy, my friends. It's not easy. When you have all the energy. If I was an old man, I couldn't find a job, then I would have settled for the job. But I have all the potentials in my life to be able to hook out something and get something. Surely I can do better than just doing this. But I had to choose that path. But you know what? When I obeyed the Lord in the years to come, I overtook all my friends. I have one friend who's working as a specialist doctor in, in Kuala Lumpur. He, he said to me, he said, I envy your life. I said, I know. He said, I'm working like a dog. He said, I've been working here as a specialist in this Tungshin hospital. You know, we are just working and working and working. I could not see anything outside except patients and their bodies. I said, unlike you, I said, I've traveled around the nations of the world. I've been everywhere. I've seen, you know, all kinds of stuff. I've been traveling up and down. He said, I envy you. That's what he said. Friends have gone into high places. But you know what? The restrictions of their life. But you see, when you follow God, you never lose out. Amen? So when you, when you live in the light, you will not stumble. You walk in the light, you will not stumble. If you walk into darkness, you start to stumble. And the blood of Jesus only protects you when you walk in the light. But the moment you walk out into darkness, what's going to happen? The prince of darkness has authority over your life in that area. Let's say, for example, God, you know, God deals with you in this area. All right. One of the areas I'm going to teach you is in the area of finance. To sort your finances out, to stop you from worrying about finance and help you handle your finances well. So that you can start to believe God to multiply resources for your future without, without just depending on your jobs. To start you to have a mind of a millionaire right from day one. So that you don't become an adult and then try to think about money. By then you'll be too late because your brains are not clean anymore. But to help you to build this foundation. When I was, when I was 13 years of age, I remember when I got saved and born again. They said to me, Jesus took our, took our sorrow, took our sickness, took our poverty. You know, so that he, he died that we can become rich. That was when I was born again, I felt in my heart that one day that God is going to break the curse of poverty completely in my life that I can be free and live in his abundance. That I can live in what he wanted to give to me. He died that I might become rich. I wanted to be that at the age of 13. I can help you. I said I can help you. Break yourself free from this curse. So you will spend all your life, if you don't break this curse, you'll spend all these lives working under a system just to get money. All the while striving to fit into the system to get resources. You'll compromise your time, your energy. You'll compromise everything just to get some money. To make ends meet. Your whole life will be like this. No matter what job you have, doctor, lawyer, whatever, even if you're the prime minister, you're fitting into a system that is just to get some job going. Just to sustain yourself. We don't want that to happen. Don't want you because you are God's choice instrument. We do not want you to be messed up by the ways of the world. Are we hearing this? And that's why it's very, very important. That's why if you walk in the light, you are guarded. If you walk out of the light, then the enemy will begin to attack you. 
I want to read a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. You can find it after the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and in verse 8. Have you got it? In chapter 10 verse 8. He who digs a pit may fall into it, and a serpent may bite him who breaks through a wall. Have you got it? He said, a serpent may bite him who breaks through a wall. The wall of protection is a light. Are you hearing me? If you live in, the, if you live in what God has said to you, you're living in the light. It is our protection. The blood covering is there. But if you, if you and I break through the wall, and go to the other side. A serpent may bite him. So the moment you walk away from what God has spoken to you, you're walking into darkness. And if you walk into darkness, the prince of darkness will now deal with you in that area. If God has spoken to you in the area of finance, and he told you about tithing offerings, you just got to learn to live in the principles of tithing offerings. But if you walk out of it, if you walk into, into darkness, what is going to happen is that attack of the enemy will come in that area of your life. That particular area. Other areas may be protected, but the devil will start attacking that area. And then before long, he will try to dig into other areas of your life. Before long, every area has been under harassment. But the enemy will start with whatever you give to him. All right? You walk away, in, let's say for example, you keep bitterness in your heart and God said forgive, you don't want to forgive. You're walking into error in that area. So what happens, the enemy will attack all re levels of relationship because your heart is contaminated. Bitterness will spread into all relationship. Before long, you find that you're becoming bitter about your father that you love. Even the people that you, you, you love, now you're becoming bitter with them. Even the people that you care for, all of a sudden your attitude has changed. You may think, what's wrong with me? What's happening to me? This is a person I love. Why is my heart turning funny? Because you had bitterness in your heart, your poison is spreading to other areas. All areas of relationship will become affected by it. Are you hearing? Always remember, you have only one heart. The same heart comes evil, same heart comes good. If you keep good and evil together, all the ones who are good to you and you're good to them and you're trying to touch them, evil will also proceed to them. Because there's only one channel. Are you hearing this? That's why you must remember that God must protect us in these circumstances so that our conscience is always clean. Everything that he has spoken to you, leave it. Do it. Everything that he has taught you, leave it. Practice it. Keep consistently practicing what he has spoken to you. Read the Bible, pray, fast, seek the face of God, live a righteous life, prepare yourself for, for greater things. All these things, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. Walk in the truth, then you will be guarded. And so anytime that you're walking out, your conscience will ring. Because the moment you walk out of light and you start to move out, and you walk out of light into darkness, your conscience will ring, just like an alarm bell. He said, uh-uh, no. Then you find yourself going back. But you see, what happens if you violate your conscience? What happens? You know it's wrong and you keep moving and moving and moving and moving and keep doing what you know is wrong. Your conscience becomes seared. You know how they brand the animals. Yeah, if you watch some of the cowboy movies, they, they have a brand. They have a hedge brand. Yeah, that's their, the brand of their, you know, their cattle ranch. So they put it on the fire and they put it on the backside of the cattle so that it's permanently marked. Are you with me? Seared. To be seared means to have a scar, permanent scar in that area. You will damage yourself. You will have a permanent scar in that area which you violate. 
And that scar will always be there. Until true repentance comes and you bear the fruit of repentance, that scar will be removed. If not, that area will move to the next level. Whatever, whether you go to a job, whether you go to marry, when you become a mother, a father, it, it, it will continue all through your life until fruits of repentance is found in that particular area and your conscience has set you free. Say, Lord, this man is true. He has changed. He has born the fruits of repentance. Let him go. The conscience that is seared will be healed. The blood of Christ will be sprinkled on that conscience and your conscience will be sprinkled clean. Then when you cry out to God in that area, God said that area is clean. Your conscience will be seared for the rest of your life until true repentance hits you. So forever in that area, you will suffer. The enemy, anytime he can come in and destroy you. Anytime he can attack that area. Any day he can just go in. He, you can go make millions, tomorrow he will topple you. Are you listening to me? You can go up so high and then he will knock you off. Why? Because that's an area he has brought you under control. That's his string attached to you. Your conscience is not even your, on your side. Your own spirit is not on your side. God's not on your side. So he knows he can create havoc. Are you listening? I'm only trying to let you know this. So that you have a sure foundation. Amen. You have a sure foundation. You can stand strong. So that when you launch into the deep, you will not have to come back. With your tail between your legs. Feel strong inside your own heart. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That's why in order for us to have that, we're going to have our understanding of a clear clarity of our own conscience. Alright? Let's go to the five points that deals with Joseph. And then we'll open up other areas so that we can have our lives become so clean in this area. When it comes to sexual purity, we will have power of purity and integrity in our hearts. Can we do that? Let's go to Joseph. Let's just get a few things out of that text of scripture so that we will be blessed by his example. Amen? Let's look at this. Number one, success brings temptation you may not have power to handle. Success may bring temptation or success brings temptation you may not have power to handle. In fact, in this Egyptian house, there was no proper boundary of healthy headship of the husband. Are you hearing me? In this is an Egyptian house. It's not God's house. It's an Egyptian house. All the men were coming into the house. The husband was absent. All the men were working in the house. They were walking out, walking in, walking out, walking in. This is not a proper home. The man had no idea about how. This Egyptian man had no idea of biblical standards in the home. Are you with me? So Joseph begins to increase his boundary given to him by the Egyptian. What did the Egyptian give to him? Come closer. Come closer. Now he was already so near his wife. And his wife, the Egyptian's wife, or Potiphar's wife, was exposed to all the men. So the order in the house is wrong, completely wrong. So sometimes in your success, people can give you more and more boundaries, more and more boundaries. That boundary is in, is in encroaching or encroaching the boundaries others should have. But because the leaders who are giving you that opportunity are careless, will put you in the crossfire. Are you hearing me? The Egyptian methodology wasn't the right way of running the home. Are you with me? To such an extent, Joseph got the inflated idea that there is no one greater in this house. 
He could walk to the bathroom, he could walk to the bedroom, he could walk here, he could walk there, he could walk anywhere. That's not allowable in a house. That are private territories. But Joseph began to have the inflated idea that he is now the greatest of all. Sometimes success that people are giving to you, they are giving you other people's boundaries. Be very careful. You may not have power to handle this. They're giving you the privileges of others on your platter. You better know where your boundaries are. Even if people don't draw it for you, you draw it for yourself. Amen? In your success, you be very careful. Just because you're close, you're close, you're close. You're, you put your hand and you're hugging, you're kissing. And, and before long, you don't know what you're doing. Are you clear? Yeah? You're holding, you're holding, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you know, you're just holding them. And, you know, you're just hugging them and letting them go. Before long, you hold them longer than the first time. Then you're holding them longer than the last time. There's no longer a hug. You don't know when the boundaries end because you don't have no boundary inside you. Just because people let you go doesn't mean you are walking in the right place. Because this Egyptian had no authority in his house. In fact, all the men are walking in and out. She was in contact with all the men. She could call the men, the men would listen. You know, to put a woman in contact with all other men is not a safe environment. The house was now becoming like a business center. Are you listening? These are not accurate models of a house. And so Joseph got, gets into an inaccurate model. He's given freedom more than he should. If the husband was accurate, you think the woman could ever go near to Joseph and said, Hey, Joe, lie with me. It will never happen. Why? Because a husband has built a boundary. But because this house was a place where no boundaries are there. In the world, my friends, there are no boundaries. In the office, they can sleep around. In the college, they can sleep around. There are no boundaries. The university lecturers will know about it, but they will not say anything. Their job is to teach. They, cannot, they say, I cannot control your private life. They know these things are happening in the university. Would they stop? No, they won't stop. Why wouldn't they stop? Because they say it's not my business. In the office, it happens. Are you with me? Those who work in the same factory, they sleep around too. Those who work in the same office, they sleep around too. You know, when this kind of thing happens, the only boundary you can have is a boundary that you build inside your own life. You may come into success, you may not have the power to deal with it. So don't ask for success. Ask for God to hold on to integrity and purity in your life where you know how to have boundaries. Some of you want to study more and more and more and more and more and more and, more and become better and better. You don't have the boundaries inside your heart to handle success in the future. You know, you want to go out there and shake the world, change the world. You want to get out there and do... You don't know boundaries. You can't even read the map properly. You can get lost in Melbourne. You can get lost in life, man. Even with a map, mail way. And still you get lost. Yeah. Why? Because the boundaries are not clear. People are so ambitious. Joseph, it was getting into Joseph's head. Look at the way he answered the woman. You know, there's no one as great as I am. I'm the greatest in the house. Hey, Joe, you, you know... Joseph, you, you, you lost, man. Just because the man has given you territory to walk in every way, doesn't mean he was right in giving it to you. According to the right model, this is not what should ever happen. So you will be realize this. In many times in your life, you'll be given extra, extra, extra privileges. Don't go as people give to you. Shut it down. Have boundaries in your own hearts. This is a brother, this is a sister, this is a sister in the church, this is my wife, this is my daughter, you know, and you, you got to know, you cannot mix it up. Your wife is your wife, your daughter is your daughter. Sister is a sister. 
But if you keep mixing the things up, you'll have chaos. You may have success, but may not have the power to deal with all the temptations that come together with success. Are we hearing? Talk to me, are you hearing? Write this down. I must be bigger than success if I'm going to handle it. I must be bigger than success if I'm going to handle it. Write down next. Number two, the first one is success. May, success brings temptation. You may not have power to handle. So don't just pursue success. Pursue integrity and purity so that your success will never be short-lived. Amen? Some people have no power. Like, you know, sometimes you suddenly they become the house champion and, they, and before long there's party and there's party and there's celebration and he drinks and he gets drunk. You know, it, one cycle after the other, you just keep going, 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 before long you're stuck in the trouble. It's always the success leads you on. It's a cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle. And that's why you've got to be very careful. Write down number two, your persona or your personality, skills, talents, appearance may bring you into a place of temptation. Your personality, your skills, talents, appearance may bring you into a place of temptation. Genesis 39. Verse 6 and 7. Thirty-nine, six and 7. The Bible talks about how Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after this event that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph. I want you to remember, if you think you're beautiful, you better have double boundaries. If you think you're handsome and smart looking, build double boundaries around your life because others will desire to have you. Some of them at all costs. Yeah. Some of them at all costs. Even if you're ugly, if you're loose, people try to have you. If they can have an advantage over your life, to touch you in parts that you, they should never touch you. To hold you. They will try. Because there are people always from the outside who desire to have you. If you're good looking, you're smart, you're kind. Sometimes you may not be very good looking, but you're kind. Yeah? You're very helpful. Even others may desire to have you. But you cannot give yourself to those who want are you listening to me? You cannot give yourself to those who want you. You've got to give yourself to those who should own you as a husband and a wife. You can't give yourself to every man who is kind. Are you with me? Everyone who does kind things to you, you say, okay, let me just, you know, sleep with him at night because he's been so kind to me. Sex is not a payment. Are you listening to me? Sex is not a payment. You just don't allow anybody Except that you've got to keep your life and your body pure for the ones who you will give yourself wholly to. Amen? What an embarrassing thing. On the first night of your marriage, you realize that you've given yourself to so many men and so many women. And now you have to give yourself to this one and say, I really love you. How difficult it is for you to say that. It'll be such a shameful night. Instead of being a joyful night, it'll be a worse night of your life because you'll die a thousand times because your conscience will prick you what a hopeless day will be so keep yourself clean keep yourself pure all right your your personality your skills your kindness what is desirable in a man is his kindness i tell you most most ladies will fall not always for a handsome man but for a kind man let me show you a scripture it's in the bible 
the book of Proverbs. Let me see if I can find the scripture for you. In chapter 19, Proverbs chapter 19, in verse 22. What is desirable in a man is his kindness. See, women don't mind marrying an average man. But if the man is kind, if the man is helpful, the man is uh, very gracious, the man is loving. You know, most women would like this. Because they like to be treated kindly and all the women said I know this was Frank all right they don't mind an average person they just don't want you know a handsome devil yeah instead of having a handsome devil they would like to like look for a kind person a person they can talk to the person they can relate the person who is gentle the person who is nice the person who is loving, the person who is willing to do, that's what they're looking for. Because all other things is just cosmetic. Hey, listen, your face is just your cosmetic asset. But if you're a devil on the inside, no matter what you are on the outside, nobody would want you. At the end of the day, three persons will find out who you are. Either by revelation or by destruction. They will find out. But they follow your trail. They will find out what kind of rotten egg you are. It's not very difficult to find out because girls have their own set of connections. And their gossip column is very, very, very powerful. If one girl said that man is a rotten egg, no girl will ever move. That man can only escape by the mercy of God. Yeah, the girls have the network of connection. They just tell all their friends, as if the boycott is on. Yeah. It, it, is, it is very, very, very important for us to understand. All right? Sometimes all these things that God has given to us as a blessing can cause you to be in the crossfire. If you're good looking, you can be in the crossfire. You don't know who is looking out for you. You don't know who is setting the trap for you. If you're intelligent, if you're kind, you're gracious. Even when you're kind to one another, be very careful that you are not throwing signals. Your kindness is not your signal. Your kindness is an act of God performing through your life. But draw boundaries. Are you with me? Some, some girls are kind. Some boys are kind. Some girls are very helpful. Some girls are prepared to listen to the things that boys are going through and get themselves hooked. I'll share these things with you in the days, in, in, the, in the next few sessions. But I want you to just remember your persona, your skills, your talents can put you in a limelight, can cause others to desire for you. You get up there on the platform and then you dance and you shout and you scream and you act wonderful. Every eye is on you. And you don't know which eye is clean. You find all these guys out there, you know, they get out there and perform in the rock concerts and so on. You find that the girls will throw their bra, bra their panties and, and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, and, and they give themselves on the backstage. I'm telling you the truth. They're prepared to go and sleep around just for one night. With their own favorite star. And there are people who solicit these things. And as they walk past by, they choose the girls. You don't know what is happening. You thought these guys were clean. That's why you put their pictures in the room. The devils that attack them will attack you. Are you with me? The devils that attack them will attack you. You are stupid to put those things out there. If you only know about their life, you will not you come into the, the house. Food. Some of you are so funny. You know, some of your parents are also funny too. Go and tell them. You know, all these things... Like, you know, the plastic bag with pictures of dragons and all that they were not allowed into the house. 
But pictures of all the movie stars are hanging in their children's room. The same people will not allow pictures of devils and dragons and phoenix, even in a plastic bag. Have all their children hanging in the photographs. This, these people attract more demons than the plastic bag. I'm telling you for the truth. Yeah, you thought these guys are clean. No, they're not clean. There's so many things that are going wrong in their lives. You don't know. You only see their success and their glamour. You thought this is it. Be very careful. Draw clarity inside your own heart. Amen. Anytime you are going beyond the normal and you're skillful, you're talented, draw the boundary because somebody is going to try to cross in. When you become successful, even if you're married, you're successful, somebody will desire you. You'll be very surprised what I tell you. You don't, you do, you don't know, friends, because you thought, well, things are not. See, you may be an average person, but if you're earning a lot of money, even if you look like a, you know, you don't look too nice. But you have money, you drive a big car, you, have, you, know, your, your, you know, your car is convertible, and then you have four cars, and, and, and then you're, you're traveling around, you, you are living in this. Somebody will desire for you. Somebody will set a trap for you. If it is not a lady, it will be a man to get your money. Somebody will try. That's why you must always walk with integrity and have the power of purity. The moment you read signals, you've got to move. That's why the Bible says to Tim, concerning Timothy, flee youthful lust. What is youthful lust? It's just flirting spirit. Youthful lust is a flirting spirit. That's what youthful lust is all about. It's just to try anything and everything. It's okay. Just sleep around just, just for the experience. Are you listening? These are demonic activities. That's why God, Paul said to Timothy, flee useful lust. Purity is power. Pure in our heart, pure in our mind, pure in our motive is power because this is something that the devil cannot replicate. And we find that this message is coming to us clearly. You know, um, some of the things that have been spoken to us in this session is that the pathway of righteousness, there's a, there's a path in the spirit realm. All the time you find that David, when he prays, he says, Lord, show me your path, show me your way. What is he talking about? He's talking about there's a path in the spirit that is there. And it's there because there's an integrity in our hearts the unchangeableness in the unchangeable times, changeable times. And this is what I believe that this is this is a message that is so important. This is a series that is so vital. How God can make us, how God can shape us, what is required of us, and how God prepares us. How God prepares us so that whatever that's going to happen will not cause us to be stumbling or falling down because he has already prepared all things for us. Amen. You know, the whole aspect of conscience is also a vital one because the Holy Spirit touches our conscience. He speaks through our conscience and our conscience needs to be clear. And it is important that um, one of the things that was spoken to, to us by the Holy Spirit this evening is to tune our conscience to the Holy Spirit. Tune our conscience. And as you begin to do that, it's very easy to pick up whatever the Holy Spirit is saying because our conscience is clear, our motive is pure, and our hearts are right. I pray this evening that God has spoken to us clearly as we continue, as we continue to allow God to make us. The making is a very, very important part of our life. How much God can make us, how deep God can go with us will determine how high he can also go with us. So I pray today that as we continue to allow purity to come into our heart, our mind, our life, our motives, our every aspect, our body, our mind, and let it be clean always, I pray that God will make us a prince 
to begin to take down principalities that are in the heavenly places. Amen. God bless you. I pray this week that you and uh, your family and your church will definitely uh, enjoy the reality of the presence of God. That's what we continue to. That's what we continue to press in. That's what we continue to believe God. The reality of the presence of God. I believe that even in this session today, you know, you can see that Joseph did everything to keep the presence of God. There were boundaries inside of him. There were boundaries. You know, um, the message today is to have boundaries sometimes double boundaries inside of us. It's amazing. It's amazing that when God created man, he created man with the ability to create boundaries inside of his own heart. So when everything is going wrong around him, there's a boundary inside that will speak to him and say, no, this is not right. I will not do this. I will not do this thing that is, mm, that is not good before God. And because of that, his conscience was clear and God spoke to him. Amen. I pray this week will be an amazing week for you and your family as you allow the reality of the presence of God to keep on shaping us, making us every thought, every, every thought, every motive, everything in our hearts, let it be pure because purity is power. Purity is power. God bless you. Have an amazing week. And from all of us here in the headquarters, let the blessing of the Lord be upon each and every one of you. Good night. And thank you for being with us. Hidden dreams.